good afternoon. It's Sunday afternoon. It's the 4th of February and yeah, we're into February. Amazing. Um, we're also on the other side of um, Imbolc. So we're actually closer now to the spring equinox and you can really feel it. Like it definitely feels lighter, longer and um, so much stuff is, is sort of coming up and there's lots of little signs, lots of little buds and things, but the hellebores, oh, the hellebores are taking center stage at the moment. So I cut back the foliage last week and this week they are looking amazing. So I'm super pleased with those and some of my favorite have come out and there's still some other ones in the darker varieties still to come as well. Um, but that's really exciting and obviously there's a lot of snowdrops about and yeah just the promise of what's next. So the next crocuses, then daffodils, then tulips, then alliums <laughs> and then before you know it we're into the summer. Some of the things that I thought we would do for this week are compost update. Um, so the compost trial with the onion seedlings, um, I think we're due a check-in with those because it's now been I think a whole month since they were sown. So we'll do that. Um, I want to do an update on the chilies and how they're getting on. I've just noticed it started raining. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, anyway, chili update and <laughs> I also have now more chilies to sow, but we'll get to that in a bit. The other thing is, ah, I think I should have sown my loofah seeds by now. Um, so I'm going to dig those out and sow some loofah seed. And was there anything else for this week? Well, my first job, I think, is to head down to the back of the garden and look at the blueberries. And I think I've made a decision that the blueberries can't do another season in their big pot all together. And it's time that they each got their own individual pot. So we're going to repot the blueberries. <laughs> in the rain by the looks of things um but i did have one other job but which maybe we could do before um the blueberries while it's raining um and that was to decant and do a new brew of my kombucha so some of you might know i've not always been dog on the plot um before that in a previous life i was life sabooch um, and that was a riff on the fact that I brew my own kombucha. And I feel like fermentation is slightly in the air at the moment. Lots of people are talking about it. And I thought you might be interested in seeing uh, my kombucha. So maybe let's head indoors and do that. And then we'll see if the rain stops and I can come out and do the blueberries. Okay, so what is kombucha? Kombucha is a sweet fermented tea. Uh, it tastes well, depending on how long you leave it, and I tend to leave mine a bit too long, it's quite acidic, um, so it's nice to cut it with some soda water or tonic or something like that. Um, but essentially, yeah, the, the, it is a fermentation process where you take black tea and sugar and create a, a drink out of it that's full of really good bacteria for your gut. And um, <laughs> you can tell that, although I've read lots about kombucha and different fermentations over the past none of it sticks i don't know the science um, but i trust the science that this is very good for me and plus it tastes really nice you don't have to make kombucha like this and i've made elderflower kombucha before which we should probably do when we get some elderflowers but this is like the basic recipe and that will get you a really nice healthy scoby that, that you can yet use for more floral um, and different kinds of ferments. So this is the basic that you kind of need to get your head around before you can go on to do the other ones, I would say. So I just mentioned the word SCOBY, which stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast. And that, my friends, is what it looks like. <laughs> it's totally gross and alien. But this is the thing um, that forms across the top of your kombucha. Um, and is part of the process of, uh, of fermentation. Now, actually, you don't need a SCOBY to start. You just need a cup of the uh, brewed kombucha. And that's what you'll need, or will need, for our next batch. So I put aside the SCOBY and a cup of the starter. And then that's our finished kombucha from the last batch. You give it a good stir now. And you can see how it's fizzing up. And that's because it is carbonated from the fermentation. Um, so I'm just going to decant this into my jars and then we'll make the new brew. Now at this point you can um, do a second fermentation, which basically means you can flavour the kombucha in some way and leave it at room temperature for a few days to infuse. And, and then you've got a flavoured kombucha. I think for now, I'm just gonna leave these ones plain. 
and uh, so tops on and I will leave them out for a few days anyway um, just to build up that carbonation again so they're nice and fizzy and then you can halt the fermentation by putting them in the fridge. So the first step to making your new brew of kombucha is 100 grams of sugar and this is a mix of white sugar and some golden caster sugar or golden granulated and then you want three tea bags and generally use black tea um, especially if you want to try trying to keep a really healthy scoby but my health my scoby is very healthy so i'm going to do a green tea one for this time and then you want to fill that with hot water as in boiling water There you go, so that's one litre of water. Give it a little stir to help dissolve the sugar and get the tea going. And then put that aside for 15 minutes. Okay, so while that sits for 15 minutes, let's go into the greenhouse and we can check on the compost trial. Okay, it's been almost exactly a full month um, since these were sown and uh, you can see a real difference I think. So this is the, the plant grow and this is the silver grow and not only the plant grow bigger, um, there are much more luminous green as well which I wasn't expecting and I assume <laughs> is a sign of good health. Um, but yeah, they feel, well, they certainly seem like strong little plants, whereas the silver grow do look a bit weedier. They're just not as tall and um, they've got some browning at the ends, which I suppose those have too and is a bit of an oniony thing. So maybe that's not such a big deal. Um, but th there isn't as many as well. And now that's not a perfect um, variable because um, I did pinches of seeds in each of the cells. So I could have been a bit heavier handed with the plant grow than I was with the silver grow. But to be honest, I'm really surprised by those results. I mean, the silver grow has a really good reputation with gardeners. And, and you know, there's nothing wrong with those seedlings. They look fine. And perhaps if I hadn't been doing the trial, I would have been really happy with how they came out. Um, what I would say is that I noticed the compost dried out quite quickly. Whereas the plant grow, I felt held on to moisture a little bit better. And then when you look at those, there's just such a big difference. It really is. Oh, she says, knocking them over. I mean, now my question about these is, how do I carry this experiment on? There are far too many onions in each of these cells to multi-sow. Um, so I'm guessing you would want four or five seedlings to as in a cell for multi-sown onions. And here I've got um, probably close to 15 or so in each. So what I was thinking is that I would divide them into little clumps and then pot them on in cells. Um, so they will eventually be multi-sown. Oh, smell good. <laughs> smell oniony. Um, and continue with the experiment. So do the plant grow cells with plant grow and the silver grow with silver grow. So what do you think? Yeah, part two of the compost trial. Maybe start that next week. And I did buy um, a couple more banks of plant grow actually this weekend because um, I nipped into Derby Garden Centre, which was a good thing I did because I found all the potatoes there. So I now have a further, I think all are, um Although this packet says main crop, I'm pretty sure you grow them as a second early and they can be a main crop. I might have that wrong. I'll put it on the screen. Um, but um, I really wanted Orla because they were the variety that um, Beach Grove did in their trial and it came out on top. So that was their, their pick of the varieties that they trialed last year. So I did want to give Orla a go. And I like that the packet said it was um, a good one for beginners. <laughs> It does mean now that I have an um, enormous amount of seed potatoes on my windowsill and um, I've actually had to stagger them slightly to all fit on there. So we've got um, not only the varieties that I shared with you last week, but also I, I looked what I still had in storage and I still had some of the salad blue, I still, which I did talk about um, wanting to do. I still had a few pink fur, just tiny ones, but I figure, let's see, let's see what we can get from those. And I still had some Valor. Um, that were good and actually starting to sprout. So um, all of those have gone onto the windowsill to chip as well. And um, and now Orla has been added to the mix too. So yeah, we're gonna have a lot of potatoes this year, I think, a lot of potatoes.
The other thing coming out into the greenhouse now is the lettuce and rocket that I sowed last week. So there's the rocket looking amazing. Um, and that's the lettuce, that one's Bronze Beauty. And um, I think there was good germination. Um, it looks a bit more sparse than the rocket because I did sow the rocket thick because I might be having those as microgreens. But actually, I think I might have got the hang of thinly sowing um, because that's quite quite nice for the, for the lettuce. The other lettuce, is this one marvel of four seasons now i think that is poor germination rather than good sowing and if i remember rightly this hasn't had good germination in the past this particular seed so um we'll see how those do but i brought them out here now because um they've all i think what has germinated has germinated so they're coming into the greenhouse now and lastly before we go in and look at the kombucha check this out so the broad beans, still no sign, right? Um, but can you just see some of the soil is, is pushing its way up? There's definitely stuff going on. And then if you look underneath, and I'm going to try and do this without knocking them all out. Can you see that? <laughs> there are roots. There are roots growing from the bottom. So those beans are fine. They're doing their thing, even if they aren't quite showing on top yet. But actually, oh, I said that, and then I've just seen a little tiny bit coming up. I'll do a close-up. Can you see it? There it is. Yay! <laughs> Come on the rest of you. Right then, let's get this kombucha done so we can get back out and sort out these blueberries. So once the 15 minutes is up, you can remove the tea bags. And then you're really just putting the ingredients together. So I put um, 1.5 litres of water into my vessel. So there was already one litre in here. So it's 2.5 litres in total. So 2.5 litres of water, five tea bags, 100 grams of sugar. Um, so the sweet tea goes in. This is cold water. Ooh. I always make a mess doing this. There we go. And then to your sweet tea mix, you add your one cup of starter kombucha from the previous brew. And then the SCOBY just goes straight on top. And that is it. You just cover it up and leave it for a couple of weeks and then have a try. And if it's to your taste, then you can bottle it up and the whole process starts again. And basically I do this every two to three weeks. It's just an ongoing kind of process. There we go. Now, if you want to make your own kombucha, obviously what you do need to get started is the starter or a SCOBY. Um, ideally you would have the starter and the SCOBY and people that I've passed these along to because the SCOBY grows and grows and grows and then you can pull it apart and you can gift somebody um, the, the old layer of SCOBY with a cup of kombucha and then they can start brewing their own. So the ideal thing is you find somebody who already brews kombucha and that are happy to gift you a, a SCOBY and, and some starter liquid. Um, but you can buy them online as well. And, um, and as I say, actually, you don't really need the SCOBY. You only really need the starter liquid. However, if you were to use one that you would buy in the shop, it would need to be kind of a raw kombucha, a very natural kombucha. Um, it, yeah, not really one of these commercial ones that tend to taste quite sweet and quite flavoured. They wouldn't be any good for, for starting your own brew. But I hope that was interesting to people. If not, tell me to stop doing stuff like this. OK, so let's get back in the garden. So here we are at the back of the very messy garden, and this is a well, it's kind of an old pond liner and it's what I've been using to grow my blueberries in because it's full of ericaceous soil. I filled it with ericaceous soil and um, it's got five blueberries in here, which is far too much for the space that's provided. And it's also got a few heathers in here as well. Um, so what I thought I would do is take these out and put them into their own tubs. And the eagle eyed of you may have noticed that last week I bought these big uh, black tubs from the garden centre and um, I bought four of them and I've also got one smaller one because one of the blueberries is smaller than the rest and I thought they could go into these 
So here I've got a mix of ericaceous soil and just multi-purpose compost to put into the pots. And I thought I might also put some of my homemade compost in. So let's go have a look at that. So this is the one that I covered um, to just leave for the spring. Some that's meant to be in that side has fallen into this side. And um, yeah, I covered it with the um, twister mat and uh, it looks pretty much the same as when we left it, which I guess isn't surprising because obviously it's cold over the winter, but actually I think that would be good in the bottom of the blueberry planter. Sorry, I just had a sniff there to see what it smelled like. And yeah, it's okay. <laughs> sort of. I mean, <laughs> it's not like, you know, when Charles Dowsing does it and gets a big sniff and it's like, oh, it, it smells like woodland floor. Yeah, not quite that. Um, but nevertheless, I think it will continue to break down in the bottom of the pot and feed the blueberries. That's what I'm going with anyway. And um, plus, you know, it cuts down on the amount of compost I have to buy in. So let's, uh, let's get some compost in these pots and then see how these blueberries come out. blueberries so that one is um gold traub 71 i think this one bagata blue so that one oh the stems just such a lovely lovely color um rika blue crop that's the small one and that's actually my original so <laughs> Don't quite know what's happened there and then this big one is the pink lemonade which did crop rather well last year um, so i think these uh, buckets are a good size there's actually a lot of i mean of course there is a lot of soil left in this planter and um, so i might use a bit of that to backfill um, and then some of the fresh ericaceous to give them a bit of a boost as well but uh, yeah pretty good okay So even though they're in um, their own containers now, I will still keep them very close together because um, with blueberries, they, you generally want more than one to pollinate. So if I keep them in a group, um, hopefully the pollinators will hop from one to one and this year we'll get lots of blueberries. I hope, it, I hope taking them out this time hasn't stressed them. Um, there are already buds on them. So I was thinking I'm doing this while they're dormant, but um, they're already, already budding. Uh, my last job then is to find somewhere to put these heathers. I've still got some of the ericaceous soil, so I can use that and um, find a new spot for those. Uh, 
Okay, we've moved inside um, because we're going to work on the chilies next. I want to show you my current chili setup because it's rather random. So this is a, a prime example of, of use what you've got. So this is my propagator base, which is plugged in and is gentle heat from the bottom. I've added in a little base of foil for the grow lights to um, bounce off of and create more of a light environment. Um, but to get them to the right height, I've um, balanced them on some uh, dog poo back boxes and my um, cakes, cake rack, cake cooling rack. And uh, so that's, <laughs> that's what we're working with at the moment. The top of the propagator lid is over here because that's on top of the aubergines and sweet peppers that has the um, hotter heat mat underneath. You can see the condensation on there. And um, we've actually had some seedlings pop up. In fact, there's two just there and one there. And I think that's it so far. So the varieties we've got so far are the Czech early aubergine and one long purple aubergine. Um, but that's it so far. But it's the chilies that I want to work on now. And um, I, think, I think they're ready to be potted on. So this is what we're looking at. Um, fairly leggy, but getting the true leaves. And we've had good germination, not bad. Seems that this is old seed as well. And um, th so these were 8th of January, these were sown. Um, and we're now on the 4th of Feb, so nearly a month old. And I think ready to pot on. One of my New Year's resolutions, you'll remember, is not to leave things too long before potting on. So that's, uh, that's why I'm trying to keep on top of it. But what I want to do is um, bury these stems a little bit so that uh, they can become slightly stockier plants rather than sort of stretching up towards the light. Uh, yeah. Okay, that was the plan, but uh, my nephew just rang and said, five minutes, dog walk on the plot. Um, so I guess we're heading down to the plot. Hmm? Kombucha. Um, so, okay, well, <laughs> we'll, um, we'll pick this up again when I get back. Off to the plot we go. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Little impromptu visit to the allotment, although it was very nice down there. And I've come back a Romanesco richer, uh, which I will have for dinner tonight. I thought it best to, I wanted it to be bigger, but I thought it best to, to harvest it now um, before the florets were just slightly um, separating and uh, looking like it would try to go to flower or bolt. So, um, oh well. Right. Oh. Come on in. You can't. Mind the microphone. You can't sit there, Dory, because we're going to put on some chilies. We're going to put on some chilies. Yeah, that's exciting. It's exciting. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. Come on then. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Right. Um, okay, so where did we get to? I um, wrote some more labels because another resolution that I'm trying to keep is to. Um, Make sure I label properly. 
and uh, here we go. I've watered. Um, no, I've not watered these, have I? They feel moisture. You know what I might do? I might pop these in a bit of water for a few minutes um, just to uh, get the soil a bit damper so they're easier to remove. Top tip. Okay, let's do that. Right. Okay. So I've prepared my trays and I picked these ones because I think I have 18 seedlings, I think. And so um, these have nine in each. And um, I'm the, they're sort of, sort of a little um, bigger than kind of a normal cell that you would get in like a CD60, CD40, whatever the Charles Dowding trays are. So they're a little bit bigger than that, but um, they will have another potting on, um, obviously after this one, um, to go into a kind of a nine centimeter pot. Right, let's, uh, let's do the ones I'm less precious about first. <laughs> <laughs> so I can get into my rhythm. Um, right, we've got three, we've got four Portugal. So let's do those ones first. We're going to practice on the Portugal. These have got their true leaves as well. So I've got my trusty chopstick. I'm just going to lift the soil under the seedlings and then hopefully lift it out fairly easily by the true leaf. Okay, and now it's going in fairly deep if I can. There we go. So I've buried some of the stem. Yes, that's much better. Oh, that's much better. Okay, good. Oh, that went well. Let's do another one. So we're going to, this has actually got two sets of uh, true leaves, this one. So ease it out from the pot. There we go. There's the seedling, a little bit leggy. And then we're going to put it nice and deep into here. There we go. And uh, much less leggy. <laughs> it's like magic. Do one more with you. There we go. Again. It's got nice roots. And then nice and deep. You can slightly bend the stem to bury it a bit deeper, but I'm, I'm trying to be cautious. And then the last thing I want to do is make sure I'm labeling every single one. So I've written new labels for each of them um, because, yeah, as I say, <laughs> I've not been great at labeling in the past. And uh, if I just put one and then think, oh, the next four are that one and the next... If it gets turned around or things get moved or one dies and you put something else in there, it gets very confusing very quickly. Right, only 15 more to go. <laughs> potted on all labeled <laughs> and um, yeah looking a little bit less leggy now so they're back in their setup and hopefully they're going to be happy like that for a little while longer and when there's a good root system on them we'll um, pop them on again now as I hinted at earlier we're not quite done with chilies so this is um, Mayu's fault let's put some roses who did a chili video not long ago and recommended um, a particular variety called Chinese five color. And um, it looks such a beautiful plant because it goes through five colors, including reds and purples and greens and such. And um, yeah, it looked a really beautiful plant. And uh, Mayo said it tastes really nice. Like, a, did she say like a smoky flavor or whatever? Anyway, she sold it to me. Um, so I went looking for a supplier and I go just Googled it and, um, you know, it, coming up on Amazon, it was about uh, about four quid or something for five seeds. But then I found uh, further down on my Google search, 
a, a company called Isotope Chilies. And um, they had the Chinese five color for two pounds. Um, plus you could get free postage if you signed up to like the newsletter. So I signed up and then I thought, well, um, since I'm saving two pounds, I'll buy another <laughs> packet of chili seeds. And I think the one I'd pick was Trinidad perfume, which I'd heard good things about. Um, anyway, my seeds arrived. So my two packets of seeds that I bought came and um, this is what came. So I'm assuming this is because it's end of season for chilies and he did say we'd be closing his shop soon. But yeah, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven packets of chilies. And there are like 10 to 14 seeds in each of these. So for four quid, <laughs> I got all of this. Absolute bargain. So anyway, I told Liam at Isotope Chilies, I would definitely give him a shout out on the channel because um, that was that was super generous. And um, and that wasn't about me having a YouTube channel or anything. Um, I hadn't mentioned that when I was purchasing them. Um, yeah, I think it's just because it's it's end of season. So if you want some chili seeds still, then I highly recommend going to Isotope Chilies because, um, well, you'll have chilies for life. Because there's no way I can grow this many chilies when I've already got this many on the go. But I definitely do want to do the Chinese five color. So I'm going to do some of those and I'll probably do the Trinidad, Perf uh, Trinidad perfume. But the other ones we've got here are Serrano, Shepherd's Ramshorn, Red Ricotto, which is a lovely dark seed. So maybe we'll try those. Petit Marcellus, uh, Black Royal. Oh, I don't have a black pepper, I don't think. Maybe we'll do that one. Cajun Bell, Ooh. Lee Black, Marconi Red, and Big Jim. <laughs> Maybe I should do Big Jim. Um, and then obviously the Chinese Five Color and the Trinidad Perfume. So um, what I thought I would do, now that these are freed up, um, I thought I would give them a little bit of a kind of refresh, um, pat them down a bit, and sew some more chips. <laughs> So some more chilies. I just can't believe how many chilies I'm going to have. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to do. And um, yeah, I think I'll look some of these up on the website and uh, make a decision about which ones I'm going to add, to add to my collection for this year and which ones I'll have to save for next year. Now, while I was um, just over at my seeds, I did pick out the loofah and I had forgotten that they do recommend to uh, soak loofah seeds overnight. Now, I'm not gonna be able to do these tomorrow because um, I'm a busy day at work. So um, I'm gonna hold off on those. And the other one I also got out was my melon, sugar baby melon, because you sow your melons from February. And I do think I want um, a good long growing season for a melon because I'm not sure I'm gonna get one. For the time being, I'm gonna get these chilies sown. And um, yeah, hopefully we can catch up later in the week.